Hello, Fernando, and thank you for this kind introduction. And uh, everybody, uh, good afternoon to everybody, and thank you for joining this uh, ISGAN webinar that is uh, about uh, the planning of distribution systems in, uh, in, in the new era of, of smart grid. And just uh, this is, uh, okay, just let me show. This line, okay, this is a, a brief outline of the presentation. Just uh, we will have few slides about the ISGAN. And uh, what, what is the ISGAN? ISGAN is a strategic platform to support high level government attention and action for the accelerated development and deployment of smarter, cleaner electricity grids around the world. And uh, as you can see, it's an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial and it's also organized as the implementing agreement for a cooperative program. Smart grids. And uh, uh, East Ghana is uh, divided uh, into uh, eight annex. And uh, as you can see, we have one about the global smart grid inventory. Then we have uh, smart grid case studies and cost benefit analysis and toolkits. Actually, currently, I'm the, the leader of this annex. And then uh, we have uh, Annex 4 in fights for decision makers and Smart Grid International Research uh, Facility Network. And then we have uh, Annex 6 about power transmission and distribution systems. And uh, Annex 7 is about the, the transitions. Uh, and, uh, and then we have the ISGAN Smart Grid Academy, that is uh, the uh, organization that promoted the, this, uh, this webinar and many other webinars. And uh, this is the geography of Isgan. As you can see, it's really a, a huge organization and uh, almost, uh, well, we, we have countries from all over in the world. And uh, I don't have time to go exactly to list all the countries, but you can see the, the flags in the slide. And uh, so now we can uh, start uh, with, uh, with the presentation. And uh, the, the first uh, group of slides is, is about the context and the motivation of the activity. And uh, well, you, everybody know that, uh, knows that uh, we have some key drivers that are motivating uh, the, the change. And we have, uh, for sure, environmental and regulatory pressure. We have a market liberalization and uh, the need for uh, improving efficiency in uh, energy supply. And uh, for sure, we, we, we have to improve the security of supply and the reliability and increase the quality of services. And uh, well, we don't have enough money for any kind of investment. And so it's very important in many companies to postpone investments on, uh, on copper, on, uh, on hard infrastructures. And uh, we have a lot of uh, dispersed the renewable generation in many countries. And, uh, and this part is also now uh, followed by many other countries. So just to give you an information, in Italy, we have almost 20 gigawatts of, uh, of dispersed generation installed and connected to our distribution uh, systems. And uh, one third of energy is now in Italy produced with the renewable generation. And uh, finally, uh, in order to manage uh, this huge amount of, uh, of new generation, uh, we need much more flexibility in the system. So also flexibility is uh, a key driver. And in, in, under this topic, we can uh, uh, count uh, storage, uh, electric vehicles, uh, and active demand, and, and et cetera. So now decision making is a really hard job. And, uh, and you, you can see that uh, we, we can split operation and, and planning. Uh, and then we, have, uh, we were used to have a long time decision in planning, a real time or near real time decision in operation. But now the trend is to, to make the cycles uh, shorten. And this is uh, particularly in planning is very uh, important. And, uh, Another point uh, is the, how to generate uh, different uh, alternatives and different scenarios. You know, the particularly this is very important in planning. But now we are facing a much more uncertain situation. And so the future is really foggy, maybe more foggy than, than in the past. And it's very difficult to realize the impact. And so we, we should manage better than the risk uh, that are behind our decision. And uh, if I, I, I go to, to 
to planning in, in demand forecast uh, where we were used to be based on macroeconomic and historical models but now we have to forecast uh, also not only load but also the distributed generation production and renewables and uh, for low data forecast uh, the, the most important uh, fact uh, is that uh, in, in many countries uh, we have smart metering and so we are uh, going to have a lot of information and uh, we should use this information in our planning studies and uh, another important point is the, the way we generate alternatives and uh, well the, the the, the most important uh, point is this, uh, on this is that, is that uh, we should uh, consider uh, active network solutions. And that means uh, we should uh, consider the operation also in, in site planning. And this is something new. And also another point is about the approach. We were used to be based on deterministic models. And uh, now we believe that is better to switch to probabilistic models that are the more suited to the application in the new world. And this is one of the, you, you can find a, a plenty of definition about smart grids and about active distribution networks. I, I have used a, a CIGRE definition uh, that is, uh, but you can uh, find similar definitions from other international bodies. And uh, you can see active distribution networks have systems in place to control a combination of distributed energy resources defined as generator, loads, and storage with power electronics. All these resources have a lot of power electronics installed. Distribution system operators have the possibility of managing the electricity flows using a flexible network topology. This is an important point. And DER takes some degree of responsibility for system support which will depend on a suitable regulatory environment and connection agreement. So we are talking uh, about uh, how to consider smart grid in, uh, in future planning. In short term, I think that this, this presentation is more focused on uh, uh, medium to short term planning, but some of the concepts can be extended uh, also to long term, but maybe we can discuss later about, about that. And what about distribution planning? We have to uh, different options for systems uh, development. We have, of, for sure, primary distribution voltage. To, then we are talking about voltages that are inside a range between uh, uh, 1 kV to 66 kV generally. This is uh, uh, from country to country. There are some differences. Uh, but uh, this is uh, quite a common range of voltages. And uh, we have. Uh, different way to have the system and we have different network architectures but the, the most common is the, uh, the radial or the mesh and, uh, and then we have possible different uh, paths in, in, in the system. Then uh, just a few, few examples of the star and then we can have very long feeders uh, and then we can find good compromises between uh, possible different uh, options. And uh, the distribution planning is motivated by different factors and these different factors uh, can uh, define some objective function that we can use in planning. And for sure we should look at, uh, at cost and then we have uh, uh, capital expenditures and we have also operational expenditures so we have to look at uh, building, maintenance, uh, losses, costs, and we have to consider in planning the load, particularly load density, maybe urban, semi-urban, rural areas are typical examples also there of different load densities. And then we have to include in planning also con environmental concerns uh, like uh, uh, the, the presence of lakes, forests, historical buildings, uh, but also uh, they need to, to, be, to be green and to uh, facilitate the connection of renewables uh, and, and so on. And another important point in, in planning is, is, very, is a must now, 
uh, is we have to consider the continuity of supply, and many countries uh, have uh, regulation based on penalties and rewards for DSOs. And uh, one important point is uh, that we should include in our planning studies the role of network automation. And uh, anyway, uh, optimal distribution planning is a, a very NP hub problem, and uh, it's a very complex problem. And the distribution planning is normally about uh, the evaluation of different uh, options, alternatives. And uh, maybe just to give you an example, we can consider the feeder calculation. And for feeder calculation, then we have to uh, talk about uh, the demand. Uh, the the uh, low demand is not really a, a certain data, but uh, uh, at medium voltage level uncertainty is, is reduced because of the aggregation of several customers. And normally, we used to represent loads in load flow calculation with a single yearly power demand, maybe the, as an example, the peak value, or with a unique load profile. And then we can repeat the calculation for each hour in a year. And we, we do some simplifications in the, in the calculations. And maybe of these simplifications can be uh, assumed because of the typical radial configuration, but uh, with, uh, with distributed generation, uh, uh, these uh, assumptions are uh, no longer uh, usable, or, or they are not so simply usable, uh, because uh, with the distributed generation, uh, we don't have unidirectional power flows. And uh, in the, in the past, but actually not only in the past, we are uh, using a deterministic approach for network calculations. And so we assume to know uh, the data uh, without uh, any uncertainty. And uh, th those uh, data are the annual power demand, the annual power generation, and the power demand growth rate, and so on. And uh, this is uh, a, a typical uh, planning process. And uh, we have uh, proposed uh, in a secret to many uh, DSOs. And the typical uh, planning, planning process at high level can be reduced to uh, six steps. Uh, one is uh, the gathering of information from markets and customers, and uh, then we can forecast the demand and, and generation. Then we do some network analysis, and then we can uh, find and propose uh, different uh, alternatives, and then we have to evaluate and select some of these alternatives. And finally, we have to design uh, the selected alternatives. And, uh, and this is uh, the answer we received from, from uh, DSOs uh, worldwide. And uh, as you can see in the chart, uh, there is a very good alignment uh, uh, between our definition of planning process, uh, high level uh, definition of planning process, and uh, uh, the answers we, we received. And more than 90% of respondents confirmed that to perform the steps of this typical planning process. And uh, if, you, if you look uh, at uh, to, to this slide, you, you can see that uh, uh, just few, few companies uh, really use uh, the potential of, of, uh, of smart grid and new technologies in, plan, in planning studies. Every uh, company in the world uh, is uh, talking and is studying uh, uh, and is claiming to, to uh, consider uh, smart grid options uh, in, uh, in the development of the system. But if you, if you go inside, they don't really uh, use smart grid options in day-by-day uh, -day planning activities. And uh, this is uh, the results of the survey. Most utilities make little consideration for active network solutions in, uh, in, in planning. And uh, there are some good reasons for that. 
one one reason uh, is that uh, we don't have uh, reliable uh, planning tools and methodologies in order to really include uh, smart grid uh, opportunities in, uh, in, uh, in planning studies. And uh, the other point is that uh, there is also a lack of uh, good business cases on, on that. Uh, so what we have done is uh, investigate a, a little bit on that. But before going on, on, on the future steps, uh, maybe we can uh, have a look at of this high-level uh, uh, flow chart that uh, describes the traditional distribution planning. Uh, just to give you an example, you can uh, produce different flow charts, but this is just to give you an idea of uh, uh, we it, it, it is uh, it has been done in. Uh, in, in, uh, in companies so far, and then I can propose some some change, and then we can discuss later on, on about this proposal. And then you, you can see we have the definition of the planning study. Maybe we are talking about the expansion of a distribution network, or we are talking on uh, how to face uh, uh, the load growth in an area. And then we have to find some uh, planning alternatives, uh, and, and then we we do normally deterministic network calculation, and uh, we see if uh, everything is okay in the system, and if not, we can uh, do something. Maybe we can uh, build uh, a new line, or we can uh, revamp uh, existing uh, infrastructures in order to make the system uh, good and to, to comply with all the technical uh, constraints we have. And finally, when uh, everything is good from a technical point of view, we can uh, uh, evaluate. So we have the cost evaluation of this uh, um, planning alternative. And finally, we can go to another alternative, to another option. And finally, we can find to, uh, to rank the different alternatives in order to to complete the decision making and and and, and decide what is better to do, and uh, what is important uh, this uh, in, in this slide is not really the the flow chart, but is uh, that uh, we normally use deterministic calculations, and uh, so the question is, uh, uh, would it would uh, it be better to use uh, uh, probabilistic models, and for what? And uh, we use a simple load models. Uh, maybe we can uh, use uh, more detailed load models, particularly because we are going to have a lot of information from smart meters. And another point is normally we don't have uh, really uh, operation at, at the distribution level because uh, operational issues uh, were fixed at the planning design stage. The system were designed uh, to be so robust uh, and so uh, so robust that any any uh, issue uh, were fixed and solved in in advance. And another point is normally we use a single objective uh, functions, or we use a combination of different uh, multi uh, objective functions uh, with weights in order to have just a single function. And so maybe this is something that we, we can improve in order to make the planning process uh, more suited to, to the uh, smart grid. And uh, about the deterministic the, the calculation, we should uh, consider that the occurrence of work scenarios is very rare, and so we invest a lot of money in some cases uh, for, for nothing. And just to give you an, an example, in order to increase the reliability, normally we have a, a radial system in the distribution with some emergency connection. And in order to use uh, those emergency connections, we have to uh, lock some feeder uh, capacity. Uh, so that uh, we can use uh, some portions of the network to supply from uh, using other parts of uh, the, the load. But uh, we, we don't really use 
uh, that capacity, and maybe we can do something better with a, with a smart grid. And uh, another point is that uh, the identification of worst cases is not so objective, and we don't have any way to uh, assess the level of risk that is related to, to the choices. And so these are some of the reasons to, to make some, some change. And so now I'm going to the novel distribution planning with some examples. So the need for new planning. Electric, electricity is now produced by renewable energy sources, and most of these uh, sources are, uh, um, are connected to distribution systems. And the production is closer to consumers, and, uh, and we are also going to have a lot of, uh, of new uh, way to use energy. Just uh, an example is the electric vehicles. And we are going to have markets, and new markets also at the distribution level, particularly the, the distribution can, uh, system can uh, offer system services to the, to the power system as a whole. So it's something that should be included in, in planning. We have a lot of information and communication technologies, and so we have a lot of information, that we, uh, of, a lot of data that we can use in, in our planning studies. And uh, we have also automation, so we can uh, reconfigurate the network, or we can uh, uh, control and coordinate the generation and also the way we use the energy. And uh, we can also consider that uh, storage is, uh, is another opportunity that should, we should consider in, in planning. And this is uh, uh, a table that we have prepared, and uh, this table uh, is not from academia. This table has been prepared by a DSO in Ireland, and as you can see, what is uh, interesting that uh, we have some technical issues uh, uh, point out, uh, typical technical issues like uh, voltage rise drop, like uh, the hosting capacity, the reactive power support or protection. And you can see that uh, we, we can uh, use uh, uh, some uh, business as usual actions. And uh, also, we can uh, do uh, a lot of things with the smart grids or active distribution networks, as you, as you prefer. And uh, j just to give you a, just one, one example, voltage rise, uh, we can uh, uh, add uh, Capacitor banks, uh, oh, sorry, voltage rise uh, and capacitor banks. Uh, maybe if you have if we have voltage issues, we can use uh, capacitor and SVC. But we can do also a lot of things by coordinating uh, the dispatch of the DER, and uh, so we we can do uh, a lot uh, in uh, in the system uh, by simply including our planning studies, also the uh, opportunities that are coming from. Uh, a more active system. And so we have uh, the idea here is uh, to reduce less traditional network investment and to increase a more cost-effective active distribution uh, actions. And so this is, uh, in a nutshell, what we are proposing in SIGRE. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad to see that as uh, chairman of SIDED uh, 6 uh, 5, that is the session of SIDED that is devoted to uh, distribution system development, I'm glad to see that uh, year by year uh, uh, the number of companies that is uh, accepting this, uh, this uh, proposal is increasing. Uh, there are many DSOs worldwide that are starting to include uh, uh, these uh, suggestions in, in their uh, planning methodologies. And so the proposal is to enhance load and generation representation uh, by using time series, by using the load and generation profiles, and uh, to increase the description of smart grids in, uh, in uh, models that are used in, in planning. And we, we should uh, 
include in, in our models to the role of information and communication technology, the role of distribution state estimators and measure, measurement systems, and, and uh, so on. And another point is that uh, we uh, should leave the deterministic approach in order to consider the probabilistic risk-oriented planning and uh, increasing the multi-objective. We should manage the risk. And, uh, and the other point is that uh, we should add in our planning uh, the, uh, also the operation actions. And this is just uh, the, the, the list uh, uh, is just about some of possible actions, uh, vault valve regulation, power congestion management, generation curtailment, uh, demand response and flexibility, uh, storage uh, and uh, electric vehicles, uh, uh, let's say, uh, VTG or something like, like that. That means that, uh, just to give you a, a clear example, if you have to build a new line, maybe you don't need to build a new line because you can ask someone to do something when there is an issue. And this is the main difference between the traditional planning and the, the new planning paradigm we are proposing. And, uh, and this is a high-level flowchart we are uh, uh, proposing. It's very very simple, but just to give you an idea what we are proposing, as you can see, the flowchart is a little bit more complex than the traditional one. And we have some new boxes. And one is about the customer's data modeling. And then uh, sorry. And uh, then we have another block that is uh, about the probability calculation, that is something more complex and different. And uh, after the uh, probabilistic uh, block, uh, we have to assess the risk, and we have to decide if the risk is acceptable or not. If it is not acceptable, uh, it doesn't mean that we have to build a new line, that we have to build a new system, but maybe we can uh, make the risk acceptable by simply uh, managing in a different way the, the, the system. And so this is uh, the block to the, to the left in the flowchart. And then we have some kind of active management, the non-network actions or solutions, in order to make the risk acceptable. And uh, the other point is that uh, the assessment of, of each uh, alternative uh, design option is not a single objective based, but it's based on a multi-objective alternative. And uh, I think that uh, we can uh, go this is uh, the, the point. Uh, we are talking about the customer's uh, data uh, modeling. It's not a, a snapshot of the operating conditions. Uh, we should use better and more smart meter uh, in, uh, in order to gather information from the field and to build uh, reliable models of, uh, of, of, of uh, loads and, and generation. And in, in this uh, sense, uh, the application of uh, big data and uh, clustering techniques are very, very uh, important. And uh, there, I think that there is a, a lot of room on that topic for, uh, for, for, for research, a lot of room for research on that topic. Just to give you some example, this is uh, from, from Manchester. And uh, you, you can see the classification of all states in a year grouped into uh, some typical conditions that we can uh, have some clusters, and then we can work on, on them. On, on, on clusters instead of, uh, of profiles. But uh, the, the clusters are built starting from real profiles. And uh, this kind of, uh, of application uh, has, has been used in uh, the academia. I mentioned in Manchester uh, University. But uh, it is now also used and proposed uh, in, a, in a company. EDF is proposing a very similar approach in order to increase the level of information and to make uh, the, the use of, 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 of this data uh, simpler. And another uh, way is uh, using uh, uh, some uh, uh, typical uh, days that are also uh, obtained by analyzing uh, real data. 
and we can have uh, also an uncertainty band on uh, on profiles and uh, you can see this is a, another another way to increase the level of information to be used in planning and this is another another way to increase uh, to use smart meters so it's a very recent activity in Norway it's a PhD thesis uh, from uh, Dr. Tonne that is uh, working with a real DSO in Norway and in this case the, 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 you can see uh, on, the, on the left that uh, the traditional model to represent the load uh, and, uh, and there is a comparison between uh, the traditional way to represent the load, this is a grocery, and with the with the real with the real data, as you can see, we are using models that are really not uh, that are not really a good representation of the reality. So we have to use the data from the smart meters. And if you use the data from smart meters and you leave deterministic models uh, and to probabilistic, you can see on, on the on the slide this one you can see that uh, you can reduce investments and you can postpone a lot of investment in your, in your system. Another important point is uh, the probabilistic uh, calculation. And uh, again, this is something very uh, important this, uh, just to, to talk a little bit about uh, different ways to approach uh, probabilistic uh, models. We can have a uh, probabilistic load flow. We can use Monte Carlo. We can use uh, fuzzy set uh, theory, as you can see. But what is really important is that uh, we can uh, manage uh, in an objective way the risk. Uh, for sure, the, the, the level of, of risk that we, we can accept is something that is not that easy to establish but we can manage the risk and we can uh, uh, define in advance the risk that we, we can accept. And this is a, an example in a real case, Italy. This is the distribution network in uh, the Lake of Garda. We have uh, 140 medium voltage to low voltage secondary substation. And uh, the demand is about uh, 8 megawatts in this small area. The network is weakly meshed. Uh, even if it is uh, radially operated and the planning period is five years long and the demand growth is uh, two percent uh, per year and uh, the question is uh, do, do we need a new primary substation that means uh, station uh, 150 kV to 15 uh, kV and to, sorry to 20 kV and uh, the other point is uh, do we need this new primary substation because we are we are building a new touristic area that is uh, going to ask for four megawatts. And uh, just to give you an example, uh, the, we have studied uh, this, uh, this system uh, with a traditional approach and uh, with a modern planning approach that is based on a probabilistic uh, network calculation. The level of risk, uh, accepted level of risk is uh, 55%. Uh, that means uh, there are 95% of probability not to go beyond the, the limits and the voltage and the uh, thermal capacity of lines and something like that. As you can see, in this case, there is not really a, a good reason to abandon a, a traditional planning approach. Uh, and the reason is that uh, we, we know very well the load, and so we don't need to leave the traditional uh, planning, but if you, if we add uh, some uh, uncertainties, and the uncertainties are represented by the the presence uh, of uh, uh, fast charging stations for electric vehicles, because uh, this area is very uh, beautiful, uh, we we want to reduce the number, the, the level of pollution, and so we want to reduce the number of uh, uh, fuel cars and we have to increase the number of electric vehicles. Well, in, in this case, uh, you can see there is a very important difference between the traditional planning and modern planning. The savings are very uh, significant, and uh, the, the, 
and we can manage the risk without uh, uh, spending a, a lot of money for, for, the, for upgrading the, the network. And so the, the message here is that uh, the higher are the uncertainties, the higher is the worth of probabilistic approach. Another point that I, I, I want to show you is about the active management and how to include uh, and what is the worth of uh, smart grid in, uh, in, in distribution planning. And uh, sorry, they said, okay, and, and for sure, we, I want to show this uh, uh, also talking about uh, multi objective. And multi-objective means uh, how to find a, a good compromise solutions for conflicting goals of stakeholders and how to manage different uh, objective functions, not only cost. This is very important because some, sometimes we cannot monetize everything and with a, a real multi-objective uh, planning, we can manage different objective functions. And uh, the problem is that uh, with the multi-objective, uh, we have... Uh, we, we don't have an optimal solution. We have a family of good solutions. So how to select the best one? Okay, decision ma uh, making uh, is, uh, is an important uh, tool now, and uh, particularly multi-criteria techniques uh, are very good for that. We have used uh, in order to identify uh, the best options uh, for, for storage and to help uh, our regulator to, to find uh, if it is allowable or not to add some storage uh, in the distribution uh, system. So we can uh, say that decision-making based on multi-criteria uh, is a good option. And, uh, and this is just to give you an example and uh, to show that uh, the very simple flowchart of traditional planning can, uh, can become uh, more complex if we had uh, multi-objective, probabilistic, uh, and, and the smart grid uh, operation uh, in, the, in the planning study. And that means uh, that there is uh, an increasing of complexity in, in planning, and we do need uh, methods and techniques in order to manage uh, the, the complexity of, of new planning. And uh, a final example, a comparison, you can see we can, we, you, we can compare five different uh, planning studies from the same small network, just to give you an idea. And then we have the deterministic fit and forget, then a simple probabilistic approach uh, with different level of uh, allowable risk. And then the, we have uh, the active uh, management of the system, and finally also storage in installed in the system. And uh, I, I, I want to show this is an example very simple, it's a very small network, just to give you an idea. And the problem is that we have to connect in this system uh, five new PV generators, and uh, we want to see what, uh, what happens in the, in, the, in the network and what kind of, of investments uh, we, we need. And uh, the result of the deterministic, uh, for sure, is the more expensive. Uh, we have to build a new trunk line. We have to refurbish uh, existing trunk feeders. And uh, we don't have to do nothing in the, in the uh, lateral branches of, uh, of, the, of the network. And we have to uh, spend for capital expenditures uh, more or less uh, 1,040 and 400,000 uh, kilo euros. But uh, what is uh, uh, interesting is that uh, we simply leave the deterministic approach and we consider the probability of, uh, of issues and, uh, and uh, voltage and power congestion, then we can reduce the level of investment. And for sure, we have to assume uh, which is the a lower level of risk. And in this case, uh, we have low risk, 5%, and we have high risk, but as you can see, the level of investment that, are, that is necessary in, in, the, in both cases is uh, significantly smaller than uh, the investment we, we, the capital expenditures we need with the deterministic. And uh, the quality of voltage uh, is, uh, is improved, so we are not uh, uh, reducing the quality of services in, in, the, in the network. 
and uh, we if we uh, add active distribution network controls so we, we can uh, we can further reduce uh, the the capital expenditures the reduction is not that much because uh, we have just uh, we, we don't have uh, so much uh, uh, dispatchable uh, DEA, and so that's the reason because we we, we, we don't improve so much but uh, if we include the demand side uh, integration uh, if we include the active demand maybe we, we can also reduce further the capital expenditures and finally the storage in this particular case the storage is very useful and we can uh, again reduce the expect the expected capital expenditures in, in the system and so you can see in the in the chart that from the traditional planning to the to the new we, we can really reduce capital expenditures and this is the chart just to show that uh, the voltage is is good uh, uh, in, in, the, in the critical nodes, uh, and uh, what, what is really important is that uh, we can manage the risk, and we can uh, exactly know for uh, how many hours per, per year uh, we we have to ask someone to do something. This is very important for also for customers, not only for DSO. And uh, finally, an example of, uh, of the software. Uh, there are some software that are capable to manage this kind of new of new application. This is a software we have developed here in Cagliari. But just to give you an, an, an example, we, there are some, some planning tools that are really capable to do most of the things I, I have showed uh, you. And uh, just to give you an example, a very simple case, but look at, at this uh, table. Uh, please, uh, on, on the left, uh, there is a, class, a typical uh, fit and forget planning. On the same case, the same network, the same uh, uh, PV to be connected. And then you can see that uh, we have, uh, uh, sorry, to the right, there is the classical one. To the left, the new one. Look at the upgrading cost, the cost for the system in the same period with the same level of risk. Uh, actually, we, we don't have to do almost nothing. And uh, on the other side, uh, we have to build a, a lot. And from uh, another uh, important point is that uh, JAO losses with the smart grid, we want to exploit our assets at the maximum level. And so you can see that uh, the JAO losses can increase. And uh, this is uh, well, the, 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 bad, the bad phase of uh, using smart grid uh, for uh, postponing uh, or avoiding investment in the in the system. Future works so, well. There is a, a, a lot of room for research in, in, in this field. Uh, we have to include the low voltage systems in planning. It's not that easy. The, the model modeling low voltage uh, is very complex. Uh, we have to uh, use uh, four wires uh, uh, models uh, and. Uh, well, the closer to, to the load, uh, the more difficult it is to model the load. So this is a very uh, hard job. And uh, we should include the role of active demand and planning. And another point uh, is, well, we want to model everything in our planning studies, but the time granularity of model is very, uh, very important. Otherwise, uh, it's very difficult to find uh, uh, tools that are uh, capable to, to, to give good results. And uh, I think uh, the other important point is to include in planning not only uh, electrical energy, but to, to include in planning multi-energy and multi-service. And this is something uh, very difficult uh, for uh, it's very uh, cumbersome in many cases. So this is, uh, there are two pictures uh, for, before the conclusions. Uh, this is uh, a, a picture that is very, very difficult to read, uh, and I apologize for that. But it, it's almost impossible to read. But I don't want you, uh, you read this, uh, this picture. I want you just, uh, you look at the colors. So the green means uh, that uh, uh, there is no problem. The red means uh, that the network has uh, problems. And this network is an Italian rural network. It's a, a representative network. 
and the projection uh, is a forecast to 2020. And this is a classical passive operation. And that means uh, that uh, every, every day and every hour on the day, we are expecting to have issues. Some issues are, these are this slide is about voltage. Uh, red means that the voltage is uh, too high or too low. And as you can see, we are going to have a lot of problems. Uh, high voltage is due to the presence of uh, photovoltaics. And uh, the, the lower uh, is due to the uh, increase of load in, in the hours of the day when, when we don't have PV. And, uh, and this is uh, what we are expecting to have uh, with the real smart grid in place. As you can see, that we, we, can, see, we can fix all issues without any investment by simply operating the networks. And uh, this is exactly what we are doing now in Italy. Now we have a very strong regulation that is promoting uh, smart grids with an output regulation. A DSO can, can receive money if they uh, increase uh, the level of smartness in their system. And by doing that, we expect to fix the vast majority of issues uh, with uh, few investments in the grid. For sure, we have to, the, to invest in and to spend money to improve uh, communication and information uh, facilities and to improve the network automation. But it is uh, less expensive and, and simpler in many cases uh, improving the ICT uh, facilities than building new lines and, and, and new uh, power infrastructures. And so these are the real conclusions. And then the, the first point is that DSOs still adopt traditional planning tools that are not really suited for, for the uh, future. And traditional planning tools uh, do, do not really include the smart distribution in, uh, in the models. And the new planning methodologies are required. And there is a, a list of possible uh, suggestions for new planning methodologies. And uh, so data modeling and smart meters, operation and planning include the role of flexible demand generation and storage in planning, uh, make a risk and reliability analysis explicit. And, and, uh, and the other point is that uh, we should uh, co-plan co uh, communication uh, and facilities uh, with the power system. And uh, just uh, CIGRE is working on that, and CIGRE Working Group C619 has finalized uh, the activity with a technical report that you can see, it's the technical brochure 591. And also now we have a new working group uh, working in CIGRE, it's a CIGRE silent joint working group, the C1, C637, that is uh, again about planning, and particularly is uh, about uh, the integrated planning uh, between uh, TSO and DSO. And uh, I think that this is the last slide of my presentation. I have some backup slides uh, regarding the future works and some examples if you, if you want. But I, I think it's time for, for questions now. And thank you for your attention.